So here's my cutting line. And I want to cut off this triangle. It's very easy to do. You have to turn off your forward, forward, which pushes the blade forwards in a circular motion. And you also want to set your speed to the lowest your jigsaw can do. You can use a normal metal file. And you're done. Perfect cut. So I've drilled over 10 holes now in the acrylic and the aluminium underneath without any problems anymore. Okay, here's the next one I have to drill and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. So I'm using the clamp to clamp down the aluminium and the acrylic. And then I use my 4.5 millimeter drill bit. And just start drilling here. So I got my hole exactly where I want it. Some WD-40 and then slow without any pressure. And now you can see the first aluminium bits are coming out. So I can speed up the drill bit now and can put more pressure to drill through the aluminium plate underneath. And here you can see the hole, perfect. No cracks, nothing. Just a nice straight hole. I was really wondering in the last video why nobody actually told me how to work with this acrylic or plexiglass or whatever you want to call it. So most people just said, nah, don't use it. Use some polycarbonate, poly, some other plastics, which is easier to work with. But this acrylic is perfect to work with. You just need to know how. So what I did is I watched a YouTube video where somebody, I think from the UK, showed all the different methods how to cut and drill into acrylics without getting any cracks. And he used, he used all kinds of tools for that. The secret is the speed. You need to go slow and easy. So I'll just link this video down below if you're interested how to work with acrylics correctly. And welcome back guys to another video here from the Offcut Garage in cloudy, not so hot Australia. So today I'm working on the whole battery shelf. I'm uh, drilling all the holes and getting these bus bar covers ready. And then we are not too far away from installing the whole shelf in its final location and bolt it to the steel frame over there and potentially as well to the concrete floor. Well, there is one final step missing and I cannot figure it out. I I really don't know what to do. And I want to ask you if you've got some ideas. I mean, I've got some ideas, but... Okay, let me show you. Ah, guys, you won't believe it. Look at this. My M4 tab. Ah, it broke. At the last hole. <laughs> I can't believe it. Everything went well, but the last hole. I probably went a bit too fast. Well, I managed... Well, I still managed to get it in with a broken tab. Ah, good. I still got two spares. But still annoying. Damn it. Ah, well, on the positive side, I got all the cables out of the bottom shelf here and I found my screwdriver back, which I missed for months now. <laughs> it was under the cables. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, let's strip it down. You know, when you get a new mobile phone and you, and you peel off the clear front sticker for the very first time. That is so satisfying. Okay, so we have now mounted our acrylic on top of the aluminium shelf. This is all nice and sturdy and isolated now. Well, as I said, the next step is a bit of a question mark still for me. In each compartment we will have now batteries and different other components, which I will show you now. 57.5 Okay, around here. Okay. Okay, so we will have two rows, eight batteries each, 16S configuration battery. We will have our nice JK BMS. And I would like to have these terminals in here as well for our balance leads. And you probably may wonder why there are so many in here. We have only a 16S battery, so we should need only 16 terminals of here to connect our BMS to our battery. We are these terminals. You are absolutely right. What I would like to do is connect another 16 terminals to the same battery. Yeah, that'll do. Blue tag for the win. Okay, so this is this is my plan so far. Um, we will have the aluminium bus bars between the battery cells, right? And this time, as many have suggested, I'm not going to connect my balance leads directly to the terminals, but we will drill into the bus bar itself. I mean, that's a four millimeter bus bar and tap M4 thread in there. So we can connect our terminals via a fuse to our balance cable which then leads all the way all the way to these terminals and then we connect the bms to these terminals that means in the future if i replace the bms i don't need to touch any of the terminals anymore this is all connected via these terminals here the idea with the second row of 16 terminals here. Well, this is for additional devices we may connect to the battery to test, to enhance, to further improve the system, like balancers, like like um, a second BMS, for example, things like this, you know. So I can leave this BMS connected to the main 16 terminals and have, yeah, here it is, and have a 16 as balancer connected to the second 16 terminals here, which are connected to the same bus bars. Well, they are connected to the same bus bar. They have a different connection, a different terminal and a different fuse. These are five amp fuses I would like to put in between. We always had our balance cables unprotected, directly connected to the cells. I mean, they are fairly thin. So in case of a short, they probably just glow away. But it is still a bit of a risk what you have there and I would like to fuse them this time. So 5 amps per terminal per balance cable. If we exceed this, I will probably solder the wire of the fuse here to the terminal there. And the same over here, it will be soldered to the balance lead with a heat shrink on top. And I leave only the fuse visible so I can actually measure the fuse and see if it's blown. Something like this down the line. So this is my idea with two times 16 terminals down here. Connect them separately to the same bus bars in our battery configuration for further testing, whatever, further improvements, connect further devices or a second BMS even. 
to see how they work in conjunction. Yeah, okay, uh, probably this seems a bit of an overkill at the moment, but I think further down the track, we will just laugh about it and say, ah, oh, what a brilliant idea. We just have the terminals here. We can connect everything to these terminals, turn the device on, and it's connected to our live battery. How good is that? So that's my plan. Okay, so that's the easy part, right? Okay, so here is the complicated part. The complicated part is the JK BMS and how to connect it nicely, properly and safely. We have only these two wires here. It's a seven gauge wire, so probably a 10 square millimeter. Is that correct? And they are fairly short, actually. And I cannot open the case and connect larger ones. I can open the case, but it's all soldered onto the main board here and I really don't want to tamper with it. So um, I'm not sure, we've got the circuit breaker up here, so we would need to have the P minus. Here, the P minus goes to one of the terminals of the circuit breaker. And you can already see how this then floats here. And the other one goes to our B minus somewhere up here. That's not gonna work, right? So the cables are far too short and not in the right position. So what I have ordered now is these bus bars here. I, I haven't got them yet, I cannot show you them. Um, this is just a one stud bus bar, like a, like a single pin bus bar, basically. That was the idea to, to have two of these bus bars here, left and right of the BMS, and have these cables basically connected to this one bus bar and then use another pair of cable to connect to the circuit breaker and to the battery properly. This gives us another um, advantage, kind of, if we have to replace the BMS, we only have to undo these two terminal screws and can take out the BMS. Again, we don't need to touch the terminals of the uh, battery or we don't need to touch the terminals of the circuit breaker then. So I, I kind of like this idea. And in this case, the BMS can be sit flat here on the, on the uh, acrylic. And we have the bus bars bent like this, connected to the studs, and have the balance leads coming out this way, connecting to the terminals. So this is my thinking at the moment. I'm, I'm not super 100% happy with all that, but with these short cables here, there's not much I can do with the actual BMS. And also, the BMS has no mounting holes, no mounting brackets or something. I would need to um, probably undo some of these screws here and have little metal brackets going to each side here. And then I can screw it somewhere on a little, on a holder, on a mount, on a bracket somewhere. I don't know. It, it would be another possibility to have it somewhere like like sitting over here on a little bracket or so, but there's not much room for that either. And we've got all the space here down here. So there is a bit of variation still and a little bit of thinking necessary to make this all work perfectly or as good as possible, I would say. This is, this is the point I'm, I'm at at the moment with my future planning and how to, and how to organize all the devices here in this space. And also, <laughs> here comes the fun part. Uh, quite a few people have actually suggested to have the front here covered in plexiglass so we can see inside and can see all the, the beautiful bus bar here and the cabling inside and what's going on and everything. And well, from the beginning, I thought about this and it was always my plan to have the whole front of the cabinet in transparent acrylic or any other transparent material. And you won't believe it, but I have already bought these, this window glass here, which is some plastic as well. It's, I think it's a PVC or so. So this was the plan to have this, this clear screen here in front of all the bus bar compartments so we can see inside if there are any LED lights or something, any error codes blinking on the BMS or any other uh, devices. We can see this from the outside. That was always the plan. And I also have bought here a 
three meter long yeah i've got this um three meter led light strip here as well which i wanted to put in each of the three compartments here for the batteries and then have a cool blue light inside or a red one or a green one maybe even in combination with a bms then so it shows you the color depending on the state of charge or if there's an error it flashes red or something like this you know down the track so you, you can you can do all kind of, of stuff with these um devices and apps here and um they are pretty cool and they are cheap and you can cut them as you need them and put them together. They come with a little microcontroller here at the beginning and then afterwards you just cut them and solder them together again as you need them. So this is all here, but I have decided against it because in the regulations, of course, it says it needs to be all non-combustible material. A plexiglass or acrylic or any other clear plastic at the front here is not as per the standard. And at least I want to come as close as possible to the standard. So I have decided to go with the original aluminium panels I have ordered for these sections. There will be separate panels three of them so we can take them off individually and just work on one battery side and the other two batteries are still in operation getting charged and discharged and we can isolate one of the batteries here and keep working on it so this is the whole plan um sorry there will be no leds at least not inside the battery cabinet and i also had planned to replace this aluminium panel with a clear one so we can see all the cabling inside all the components inside this energy distribution compartment here would have been a terrific idea and i'm sure it would look amazing but we can't do it we can't do it guys we we need to stay a little bit more professional here but um well we still have the components here so maybe we can do some other installation then later on here down the track and see where we can use this light and if we can connect it to our system and make it work for us but at the moment is main focus is how to arrange this bms here how to connect it usefully and what are we doing with these cables I don't know yet. I have some ideas which I just shared with you, but it is not all set in stone. So I'm still open for any other suggestions. And I know a lot of you guys have brilliant ideas. Yeah, guys, so far this video from today, we have all the shelves in place. The protection sheets have been removed. Everything is screwed down and I need stone. I still need to do all these ones here. I haven't done that because I need to take everything off again, clean this all up inside and then put this all together as it will be in the final stage then. And uh, one of you guys ha has actually suggested here that this one would be a rear mount space for the terminals here. Well, I had this cover open here. It's, you can see the bolt from the underside, but I think this is a location where you mount the circuit breaker directly on top of a bus bar this is how you this is what you use then to screw your terminals down to the bus bar directly without any cabling or something so unfortunately it is not a rear mount as such we could potentially get something done with a short with a short bus bar link again and mount this from the back side here without using these ones at the front here um it could be a solution but on the other hand, I don't want to use too many bus bar links and connections for this whole installation because every link, every connection means more, more points of failure. So yeah, but it is an option. Anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. And until the next video, you stay charged, stay safe. And thank you again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. Just think about Christmas and then we could have our Christmas theme. Ah, it's not going to happen. <laughs>